Hi, right, it's Faceless Tech. Um, I was kind of in two minds whether to do this video or not because I'd finished this project but I was not really too happy with it but I thought I'd show you what I've been up to. Um, the last few years I've been uh, trying to make various um, Raspberry Pi handhelds with the Retro Pi which if you don't know is the uh, distro that works for the either works on the uh, Raspberry Zero W and the Raspberry One which is basically the same chips there or they work there's another one that works on the two uh, Raspberry 2 and 3 which is the, as it plays it's to play the more powerful Nintendo 64 PlayStation games um, you know with varying degrees um, but this one these are all based on the Zero W uh, started out with this one a couple of years ago which is uh, this one with the Raspberry Pi went up here which is a bit weird you can have to wedge your hands down the backs play also with these horrible clicky buttons uh, 3.2 inch screen, uh, 320 by uh, 240, which is alright. Um, but then I made this next one, which had found these silicone buttons, which are a lot nicer to play, but a little bit mushy in my opinion. Uh, same screen, made a batch of that this time for this one. All self contained unit, not really that ergonomic or fun to play, as you can see, it's quite thick. Uh, and then enter this one, the um, calling the uh, Retro Zero. I've been looking on the Studio Mod forums for the last six months, uh, around looking at different what different screens people use and other various bits and bobs and uh, borrowed parts from other people, uh, mainly the um, Tiny uh, Tiny Pie project, which has just launched the Tiny Pie Pro, which is a really nice handheld. But um, yeah, I took this screen, which is a 3.2 inch screen, which is 320 by 240. It's quite a nice pixel density for that. Um, I soldered it straight, ribbon cable straight on, because these can be added for like less than three pounds, which is super cheap. But soldered it straight to the uh, straight to the board. No expensive connector. Um, did have a bit of problem with this because um, with the speakers, which I installed from Tiny Pie, which uh, soldered directly to the PWM pins. But on the first rev, uh, which was this one, I didn't have a big ground plane, and when you held down one of the buttons. It would literally lock up the system if you had both speakers attached but um, I did try a little mod by connecting the ground straight up to the so I thought oh great if you did a bigger ground plane which is this one see this big ground plane on the back it would solve the issue but it didn't it sold it to a degree but it's still there was still um, fees in there so um, but I think I've got any, a way to solve that in the future um, but basically it's two two bolts sandwiched together got the Raspberry Pi Zero W in the middle here connected by a header just so you can change it out if you want to. But these buttons, which are silicone, um, they have like a silicone inside them, but they're like plastic topped, so they're not as mushy as these ones, which is quite nice. Um, it's just got the uh, basically the SNES set up here, speaker on the back. You got the L and R buttons, but also it holds the power, which I'll show you on this board here. I've got these um, power bank boards, uh, I call them. They're like really cheap, about one pound eighty. You have all the connections. Um, I, I soldered a, a micro uh, USB uh, micro USB uh, uh, port on there, a uh, button there that if you click that you can see when the, when the unit's off, see how much battery life is uh, in it, which is quite good about these, they have the, the, the four LEDs uh, to let you know the battery level, so you know you know when it's going to run out. And it does actually flash when it goes really low. It's got a switch there and then it's just connected by these long male headers that I found. Um, and then there's a 2000 milliamp power battery. I don't know how long it lasts for. It lasts for a fair few hours. Um, but in this, this is why I didn't really want to show off because the next rev, I want to bring this forwards so it's right at the edge here so you can connect it up because you can't connect the GPIO because of this in the way. So you can plug it. I want to be able to, so you can plug it into your telly and use the controller so you can um, be more versatile uh, and probably make it a bit thinner as well, uh, even all this stuff out so it can just be a lot. Be a bit, like basically about as thick as this in the end uh, sort the speakers out and uh, everything else but yeah uh, it's a bit quite cheap to make uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head but a lot cheaper than a um, if you wanted to make a, a Game Boy Zero but yeah as usual there'll be a blog post with a bit more in, uh, with the board files um, if you want to make one but I wouldn't really recommend you do make one because um, I'm going to change them uh, both boards that's a good thing they've used these uh, got these made at JLC PCB which they cost about £6 each so it's about £12 but if I looked if it was gotten made at Oshpark they'd cost me £50 each which is insane but yeah you know yeah so uh, as usual uh, blog post with all the other 
bits and bobs and probably a bit more info that I've missed on this uh, video. But yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.